Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing. In case you didn't know, it's been over a year, well over a year actually, that I left Canada, my wife and I, and moved permanently to Panama. This is where we live now, this is our home, and uh, we did the move in June of 2022. So it's uh, been a while since I've done a Panama update video. I figure I'll do two episodes, two videos, so in this video I will cover taxes right this is a question i get all the time uh how much taxes are you paying now i actually see a couple of comments from the jealous haters out there that say oh you moved to panama to avoid taxes and and this and that not paying your fair share so it's time to actually set the record straight because these people have as usual no idea what they're talking about so is it really do you really pay zero percent tax in panama what's going on with the tfsa the rsp how much taxes do i actually pay on my investments on my youtube income etc so it's time to get into it right now all right everyone so i figure we'll start with the investments right the investment taxes i'll uh, explain exactly what happens when you become a non-resident in canada and just an fyi if you're interested in more of these personal journey videos the best uh, way to find these types of videos in my channel is if you click on the name of the channel and actually go to playlists i actually have a playlist called our financial freedom journey and personal life so all videos relating more to our personal life are going to be in that playlist including this video and episode number two uh, as well. So just wanted to point that out. So when it comes to the investments, guys, you guys already know my investments, right? I, I, I showcase it. I unveil the portfolio every month. So let's talk about what kind of taxes do you actually pay on this now when you become a non-resident of Canada? And there's a lot of misconceptions about this because, uh, you know, people think that you, you leave Canada to avoid taxes. It's really not the case. It actually turns out, this might surprise you, that I actually pay a lot more taxes now on my investments than when I was in Canada, believe it or not. So this is why you know I say the, the, those jealous haters that do those comments are really dumb because they're ignorant. They have no idea. So let me explain what happens when you become a non-resident of Canada. So uh, let's start with the TFSA and main account. Okay, so this is, as you guys know, the, this is my main portfolio. This is from the September unveil. Uh, uh, so, yeah, well, it's it came out in October, but it covers September. Um, so, and as you know, the main portfolio, this is really a combination of my TFSA, my wife's TFSA, and our joint non-registered cash account, aka margin account in Questrade. So when it comes to taxes, let's do the TFSA first. Uh, the TFSA, the good news is, is that uh, you, not only do you get to keep your TFSA uh, when you become a non-resident of Canada, they, it still continue, the income still continues to be tax-free. So nothing really changes when it comes to the TFSA. The income is tax-free. When I take it out, it's tax-free. The big uh, negative is that you no longer, the, the year you declare non-residency, when you're officially non-resident, you no longer get TFSA room going forward so in 2023 and 2024 you know the government says okay you have another 6500 7000 maybe it's going to be 7000 for 2024 extra room you could put well you're when you're no longer a resident of canada you're a non-resident you, you don't get that room very very sad and unfortunate so that's number one number two if ever you extract any you know i I'm 99% sure of this, not 100% sure, but almost 100% sure. When you extract any money from your TFSA as a non-resident, yes, it's still tax-free, but even the year after, you cannot put it back. So you're, you're, you really don't get any more TFSA room when you become a non-resident. And this is why starting in June of 2022, when we left Canada, we no longer extract any income from the two TFSAs because now the income is very, very, very precious, right? If we extract it, we can't get it back. So out of the main portfolio, that's why you'll see this here in portfolio objectives and parameters, I added this, all the TFSA distributions, even though they're not on drip, the TFSA accounts are not on drip, it, the money gets reinvested within the account every month because I don't wanna take that out. I wanna keep growing my TFSA because it's really uh, continues to be a, a source of tax-free income. So what about the, that's the TFSA. So hopefully that, that, that's clear. So yes, it's very, very unfortunate. No more TFSA room. Very, very sad. It's literally the thing that I will miss the most. 
from Canada. TFSA room is extremely, extremely precious, everyone. So very sad you do lose that. But hey, you don't lose your TFSA account. You get to keep them. You, the income is still tax-free. You could extract it if you want, but you no longer get room no matter what. So when it comes to the, um, the margin account or the cash account, it's very, very simple and easy to understand, everyone. In Canada, there's a withholding, there's a, there's a universal withholding tax. So uh, countries like Canada, like the US that are universal tax systems where everything gets taxed, they typically have a universal tax rate. So the US is 30%. You think it's 15 because you get that 15% withholding tax, right? If you hold any US stocks, it's actually 30 because of a tax treaty, it's re between Canada and the U.S., it's actually reduced to 15. So the universal withholding tax rate in the U.S. is actually 30, not 15. Uh, Canadians get 15, right? It gets reduced. In Canada, the universal tax rate is actually 25%. That is the universal tax rate. Now, because Panama and Canada th does not have a tax treaty, all my investments or stocks in my uh, non joint cash account, the non-registered, are subject to a 25% withholding tax. So all my dividends that come in from um, that my non-registered, which is the majority of my main portfolio, right? Because it's made up of uh, the two TFSAs and the cash account. It's maybe like 20, 25% TFSAs. The rest is in the non-registered. So I have to pay a 25%, not 15, 25% withholding taxes on all the dividends that come in. And so this is taken off automatically. You know, I could show it to you in, in passive and quest trade. You just see the dividend come in and you just see 25% that's gone. That get that gets withheld, that gets taken by quest trade. It's as simple as that. So this is why I say that I'm actually paying more taxes on my investments now than when I was in Canada because every single year that I was in Canada and you could scroll and you could see, you know, every year the summary, uh, 2021, 2022, 2020, 2019, because you have access, and I'll get to RRSP in a second, because I had access to put money in the RRSP, which offset taxes, I've never paid taxes on my investments on the dividends from my non-registered account because of the RRSP. Thanks to the RRSP, I always got a tax refund uh, at the end of the year. So that's uh, basically the deal when it comes to non-registered. So I actually pay more in taxes now that I'm in Panama on my investments specifically than when I was in Canada, believe it or not, because now I have no choice. There's a 25% withholding tax on the dividends from the non-registered. When it comes to the RRSP, so hopefully, you know, if you have any questions, let me know, but that's basically the deal. And let's say, by the way, I would have US stocks right now. It, it would be a 30, I would pay the 30% withholding tax, not 15, because Panama does not have a uh, tax treaty with the US either. So uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to the, the, the main uh, portfolio there. When it comes to the RRSP, everyone, so uh, it's very simple. So I, just like the TFSA, you no longer get RRSP room. It's very sad as well. But either way, even as a non-resident, you're not declaring taxes in Canada. So even if you would get RRSP room, it would make no sense for you to contribute to your RRSP. There, there would be no tax benefit. You you might as well put it in the non-registered cash account because all the extractions, whenever you withdraw anything from the RSP, which I haven't done and I'm not planning to do for a really long time, maybe another 10 years at least, that those extractions, those withdrawals are also subject to a 25% withholding tax. So it's basically 25%. Uh, that's the universal withholding tax rate in Canada. And because the RSP... And, you know, it is a Canadian product. The CRA does need to get its cut. And even in the main portfolio, all these stocks are Canadian stocks. So the CRA has to get, the Canadian government has to get their cut. So the RSP, very simple, everyone. Everything grows tax-free. I don't get any withholding taxes on the dividends that are coming in now and, and dripping away or whatever. It still grows tax-free. You don't get any more room. Uh, when you become a non-resident, and this is why I did big contributions to my RSP in, in the final taxation year of 2022, because it was the last year that we would get RSP room, right? So uh, everything grows tax-free, no withholding taxes within, but as soon as you turn your RSP into a RIF or your Lira into a LIF, anything you extract has a 25% withholding tax. So 
which is basically, it's almost like you're paying the maximum tax on capital gains, right? 25% capital gains are taxed at half. So 25% is, is really it. So that's basically it when it comes to the taxation on the investments. So unlike what a lot of people think, I'm actually paying more taxes on, on my investments now. And by the way, the on main portfolio, it, it's hard to say how much of this eight, approximate eight grand is uh, how much tax I pay on it. it it's about $1,500. It's about $1,500 because remember, it, it's not, you know, 25% uh, of 8,000 because the TFSAs are included in there. There's no taxes on that. So it's only on the portion of the main, uh, sorry, not on the main portfolio, on, on the non-registered joint account, which it, it, right now is approximately $1,500 a month. So I'm, I'm paying about $1,500 a month in taxes and I will pay 25% withholding tax on whatever I extract from my RSP later on. So I'm actually paying more taxes on my investments than I used to when I was in Canada. So that that's it for the investments. What about everything else? What about my other sources of income now? Let's go through that now. So that's it for the investments. What about everything else? What about all my other income sources like YouTube and digital product sales, uh, sponsorships, uh, what, whatever else, right? So this is where Panama is very, very interesting and hence the big advantage of why people really like coming here. So Panama uses or has a territorial tax system, not a universal tax system. So you only get taxed on things that you're, on any products or services you're selling within the country to Panamanians. So this is, you know, something I really double checked with my lawyer and she confirmed this. You know, since the YouTube channel, the digital products consultations, it's it's all being sold and being viewed outside of Panama, right? No, nobody from Panama is watching my videos, really. Uh, same with the, the YouTube income, right? It, it, it's it's from Google. It, it's external, so I don't have to basically declare taxes or pay ta taxes on any of that income. So it's a very very big advantage. I don't have a I didn't register a business in Panama or anything like that. You don't have to do that. I, we decided to go with the friendly nations visa. Um, and I, we discussed that. I discussed that in a prior video in that playlist I showed you. So um, that is where the giant advantage comes in for us. So you, because of the way Panama, the, the tax system is set up, the good news is, is that I don't have to pay taxes on the other, on everything else, on the other sources of income, which is really, really a huge advantage, obviously. So um, that is, that, that's basically it. I mean, short and sweet, that, that's the, the, the main advantage of why we came here, obviously the weather and other things. So, uh, and if you're interested, um, by the way, to learn more about, you know, what happens when you become a non-resident of Canada, how do I, how did I learn all this? I actually just learned from some YouTube videos, a three part series from this guy called Alan Madan. I'll put the link to the first part below and you, you know, obviously you'll find the part two and part three and it goes through all the steps of what happens, not only how to become a non-resident of Canada, but discusses taxes and if you own a home and if you own a business. For us, it was very simple because we were renting. We didn't, you know, we didn't have uh, anything to, to dis dispose of, like a business or anything like that. So he goes through all of that. In case you're interested, I'll put the link. That's where I basically le learned everything. Uh, everything to know about how to become or what happens when you be become a non-resident of Canada. So hopefully this was informative for you. This is part one. Part two will cover the actual living expenses. So like I mentioned, it's been over a year that we've uh, we've been in Panama. What, what are our monthly living expenses now compared to Canada? So that's what we'll get into in the next episode in part two. And stay tuned. Uh, because uh, a very special guest will be joining me on that episode. So hopefully this was informative. Give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it and see you next time. Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII Inner Circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. 
Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, f- follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and U.S. stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion uh, or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades and Passive, I have half off for the elite membership. If you're interested in the elite membership, And even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of Passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama and there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.